In just a moment, polio will be dripped into the brain of 58-year-old Nancy Justice. Her glioblastoma tumor was discovered in 2012. Surgery, chemotherapy, and radiation bought her two and a half years, but the tumor came roaring back. Now, the virus in this syringe, which mankind has fought to eradicate from the earth, is the last chance she has in the world. A stunning report from 60 Minutes this weekend passed. A real, honest, and traceable, possible cure for a form of cancer. And every time that word cure gets tossed about, there are plenty of skeptics. Perhaps there needed to be in this case as well. It's a pleasure to welcome back into Midpoint the Director of Medical Ethics at the New York University Langone Medical Center. Dr. Arthur Kaplan joins us. Dr. Kaplan, good to talk to you again. Thanks for having me. I was absolutely riveted when I was watching this. The, sick, uh, the sequence was called Killing Cancer, and it really seemed to indicate that they are now finding a use of a polio virus uh, or a polio treatment, if you will, to, to get to the cancer, and it showed it shrinking. But then I read a couple of reports already in the last 24 hours that say, wait a minute, 60 minutes might have jumped the shark here a little bit and gone a little bit too fast in trying to even think about the word cure. What's your take? Uh, there's no cure here yet. There's hope. But uh, they're doing what's called a safety study. So what 60 Minutes reported on is a very early study, first in human trials of this particular technique. Uh, it may work, but oftentimes you have such toxic side effects that uh, a person can't tolerate it. While some folks on that show seem to respond, others dropped out because they did have problems. So fascinating, interesting idea to use the polio virus in this way, but early days. Why would you even think to use the polio virus for something like this? Would you just get lucky thinking about this? No, you know, this is funny, but uh, viruses jump into our body all the time. Cold viruses, HIV viruses, Ebola viruses, uh, flu viruses, and polio viruses. They like to get in our cells, and if you can use them as stealth weapons to deliver something that will kill a cancer cell but not kill a normal cell, they have that capability to sneak inside our cells. Normally they make us sick, but if you can genetically change them a little bit, you can turn them into weapons. So it sounds a little bit odd, polio virus put into the body deliberately, but it's exactly because it infects us and is so good at it that it turns out to be an agent that we can trick into carrying in messages that are nasty to cancer cells. How long would we be looking at before, for instance, this being a phase one study, and then you have to get it to the point of being a breakthrough status with the FDA, which would really ramp everything up? What kind of time and money are we talking about from here to there? Oh, millions of dollars, and you're moving from a study that might involve 10 to 15 people to check safety to one that's gonna need hundreds. And I would say to recruit that many folks probably take a year, year and a half. So not 10 years, not the usual five years, and go faster than that, but you still have to give it to enough people at a dose that can kill the cancer cells without killing the person. Dr. Kaplan, where is all this money coming from when we're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars? Is this strictly coming out of the pocket of the consumer? Well, right now it's coming out of the National Institutes of Health. If this technique looks promising, and the 60-minute story didn't get into this, Probably a university and a company will take a patent on this strategy. They will then put in the money to really move it even further along to make a factory to make these genetically altered polio virus vectors, as they're called, or uh, mechanisms for delivering uh, lethal uh, damage to cancer cells. You might say, and one of the ironies is, we pay for this at the front end through the NIH, and then we pay the company later to sell it back to us. I've always thought that if this works and there is a lot of money to be made, some of that money should go back to the basic research pot, maybe a little tax. Medically speaking, what did you think when you saw this? Or I imagine you probably already knew that something like this, that this report was coming. I did, and I've heard, you know, we're using HIV virus, which is also another killer and something we're terrified of, to do similar things against other cancers. This is the whole field of gene therapy. It's trying to find ways to trick viruses, which normally attack us and kill us and harm us, into becoming agents where we use them almost as spies 
to go after the cancer cells but not touch anything else. I think it's a very exciting area of medicine. I think it's one that we're going to see more breakthroughs coming from there. Whether the polio virus turns out to be the magic bullet, I don't know. A couple of minutes we have left here, but I need to ask you about this because Lufthansa has announced today they have made public that they knew that the co-pilot who was at the controls of that plane had told them back in 2009 about his depressive episodes. So that it seems now they're trying to get ahead of this story. I guess mm -hmm. where we're really going here is what professions need mental health screening? Because we're talking about people who have people's lives in their hands, and it would seem like that that would be the trip hammer, if you will, to make sure that there's nothing wrong with somebody who has got their lives at risk. Well, I think you want to have it for pilots. You want to have it for bus drivers, uh, people who are train conductors, people who basically have lots of lives in their hands, as you say, Ed, air traffic controllers, uh, pilots. By the way, we haven't talked about mechanics who service mm -hmm. these planes, just as important as the pilots. The trick is this. You've got to convince people that they can seek help, be honest, let people know that they may have a problem or an addiction without getting fired. So we have to set up programs that say, you're going to get therapy, you're going into rehab, we're not going to pull your job, you might wind up on desk duty. But if you make it a death penalty, they won't be honest. And if you said, you know, well, doctors just have to give all the records over to companies, you know, so if they know something, they've got to tell. I'll tell you what happens. People go to the doctor under phony names. People will go off the books. They just won't use their insurance. And uh, if you don't have honest people willing to say, I need help, it's going to be hard to detect them. Would an independent review board help? It would a little bit because you might be able there to simply uh, build a wall and say, look, these guys don't tell anybody else. They just deal with you. They know where the good rehab programs are. They know how you can get therapy. They can monitor your medicine. They can take you offline for six months or a year then gradually get you back to work, maybe under supervision with another uh, person. Uh, we do that a little bit with docs. We should do it a little bit more with others. I can see that right now the lawyers are wringing their hands because this <laughs> one is going to be tied up for a long time, and you'll get lawmakers out there, and then everybody will be worried about privacy. But at the end of the day, it is still about protecting the lives of the innocents and the people who place their lives in the hands of these people, and they're responsible for it. Dr. Kaplan, it is always a pleasure to have you on the show, my friend. Thank, Thank you, you so much for me. joining us. All right, take care. For those who have always thought that internet gaming would be a detriment to the chance of getting a job, ooh, how the times have changed. Stoke up the game controller. We're about to tell you how the concept has changed, and now you can make sure you get the right job because of it. That's all coming up right here on Midpoint.